least expected this uh, disaster to come at this time. Uh, but unfortunately, it came when we were about to harvest. And that's why the farmers are demoralized. NEMA dispatches experts to Kebi State for an assessment of flood devastation. I urge every one of you to continue to give in your best to ensure the lives of those who are called to serve are made uh, better. Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development takes stock of progress of social investment program. The presidential task force is particularly disturbed by the low level of sample collection because of what it portends for the, for the strategy of testing, detection, tracing, isolation and treatment. President Buhari extends mandate of presidential task force on COVID-19 as it updates on next phase of national response. And work progresses on failed Rikachukung Bridge as Governor El Rufai receives report on inquiry into communal clashes in Kajuru, Kachia and Chikung local government areas. Hello there, I am Joseph Johnson and this is NTA Network News, reaching you live from Abuja. Hingunu John Adams is in our Lagos Network Centre for tonight. President Muhammad Buhari is urging the governor of Ogun State, Dakbo Abiodun, to keep faith with the next level agenda and remain focused in the implementation of his people-centered policies and programs for enhanced security, stability and socio-economic development. This was while granting audience to the governor in his office. State House correspondent Adam Samba reports. Governor Dapo Abiodun was in the State House to present to President Muhammad Buhari the first copy of a compendium which chronicles his genuine efforts at transforming the Gateway State for a sustainable future in his first year in office. The governor used the opportunity to inform the Nigerian leader of the desire of his administration to reconstruct the federal route leading to what he called the nation's biggest industrial hope, the Agbara Industrial Estate. This route has continued to become an embarrassment, not just to us in Ogun State, but the entire country. This place is important to us for the economic survival of our state and the country at large. We have decided to intervene in this route ourselves as a state. I want Mr. President to know that we are going to have to construct that route at our expense, and I want him to inform the Federal Ministry of Works that we will be doing so, and we will also be making demands on them for a full refund of the construction of that road. He also reminded the president of the earlier request by Ogun and Lagos state governments to take over and commercialize the Lagos Ota Abekuta road. The federal government cannot afford to build all the roads at the same time. We can take that burden off the federal government. And I'm glad to say that Mr. President was very pleased with these uh, discussions and these applications and his promise to see what he would do to give us the energy support so that, you know, this can also help us in the economic upliftment of, of, of our, of our uh, region. It was also an opportunity for Governor Abiodun to give his impression of President Muhammad Buhari. Mr. President is so meticulous. He's so methodical. He's extremely organized. And at any point in time, any governor wants to see the president, all you have to do is ask. And the president will give you audience. He will give you audience. He will take notes. And for those of us that know the president, he's someone who believes in constituted authority. So when a governor says, these are my problems, the president takes it to heart and he follows through with it. Mm -hmm. One cannot ask for a better captain of our ship. That is what I have seen in Mr. President, and that is what I probably think that most people will not know because Mr. President is not a man of many words. The governor described the recent increase in the pump price of petrol as well as electricity tariff as inevitable. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Just picking up from the petroleum supply, the Minister of State Petroleum Resources, Timmy Press Silva, has urged Nigerians not to politicize the deregulation of the downstream subsector of the industry. Silva, who calls for understanding, says the temporary hardship from the price hike, which is a consequence of market forces, will ease off 
compared to the benefits that Nigerians will soon experience. Lydia Samson reports. Price fluctuation is the normal in a deregulated oil and gas sector. This is because in reaction to the dictates of demand and supply, prices may rise or fall. Ironically, with the rise comes inherent difficulties, which experts are quick to acknowledge are only temporary. You all know Mr. President's alignment with the position of the poor, pe of poor people in Nigeria. He has always been on the side of the poor people. And left to Mr. President, I am very certain that he will never have increased pump price. But for this to happen, we must understand that this must be an inevitable policy direction, especially at this time of COVID-19. COVID-19 saw oil prices at the zero zone, something that has never happened before, at the negative zone. The minister said already plans are on the way for all NNPC retail stations to go beyond selling of petrol to alternatives like diesel and other products to ease the harsh impact. He said as part of efforts at engagement, the ministry has set up a complaint box for dissatisfied customers to drop complaints. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Vice President Yemi Oshibaju is tasking the media on reporting of virtual court proceedings as he joins the conversation on the question around reporting of virtual court proceedings, which he describes as a crucial exercise of the right to fair hearing. State House correspondent Jideo Nifade has more. I think that an opportunity that this offers us is to get rid of as much technicality as possible. This is the opportunity that we are offered. And I'm so pleased that the Supreme Court did not even hesitate in saying that, well, as far as we're concerned, uh, virtual proceedings are illegal. I've been very- Attorneys General of Lagos and Nikita State kickstarted the conversation when they approached the Supreme Court to determine whether having regard to the constitutional requirement that court proceedings must be held in public by the use of technology or remote hearing. The decision of the Supreme Court was that this is constitutional. But Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo sounds a note of warning here to media practitioners that there is limits to this. Uh, what uh, perhaps uh, practice directions may have to address? What are the limits? Clearly, uh, no one is allowed except with permission to publish... Uh, live proceedings of the court but you know uh, we, we need to really determine how this will work we need to ask uh, the, the the relevant questions and i think that in developing this, these uh, practice directions the media has to very quickly occupy the space the last may not have been hard on this conversation as the vice president notes my works still need to be done to arrive at a system towards having justice the webinar was organized by Gavel International in the State House. Jide Onifade, NT News. The Nigeria Governors Forum is leveraging on COVID-19 uh, interventions to increase response capacity to the fight against the pandemic and sustaining more commitment for the reopening of critical sectors of the economy under the new normal. Abubakar Usman Akwanga reports that this was contained at the 16th communique of the forum, uh, forum's teleconference on COVID-19. The NGF, in collaboration with Ministry of Health, is to release basic health care provision fund to eligible states to sustain services in health care delivery during the coronavirus pandemic. The forum noted the need to increase testing of COVID-19 as the economy gradually reopens and schools prepare to resume, as well as the conduct of elections in some states. The 36 state governors were commended by Rotary International for the seamless coordination of immunization in their states and received a Rotary International Polio Certification Award for their roles in eradication of the virus in Nigeria. The community also reveals that state's fiscal transparency, accountability and sustainability program is introducing a new project with 50% properties to support states to implement 2021 urban electrification projects.
Governors are also expected to nominate four persons to interface with the Ministry of Petroleum Resources on the actualization of the National Gas Expansion Program and states governments through their internal revenue services how to ensure seamless implementation of tax relief program for businesses and taxpayers. The Nigerian Governors Forum Technical Committee is working to finalize an acceptable framework for the implementation of the Executive Order 10 in Abuja. Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News. Experts from the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, have uh, carried out on the sport assessment visit to some communities ravaged by flood in Kebi State. This is in line with federal government's directive for necessary measures towards mitigating the impact of the massive flood that hit the state. Nora Tanko Wakili has more on this. The team, which comprises officials from the National Emergency Management Agency, Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, and the Nigerian Air Force, was in Kebi State following a presidential directive to identify with the victims and assess the level of devastation by the disaster which claimed lives and destroyed properties, including farmers' huge investment in agricultural production worth billions of naira. This dashed the dreams of farmers who envisaged bonfire harvest and displaced many communities from their settlements. We least expected this uh, disaster to come at this time, uh, but unfortunately it came when we were about to harvest, and that's why the farmers are demoralized. Containing this requires swift action, and the team was on hand to assess areas of intervention. And the Minister of uh, Humanitarian Affairs, uh, Disaster Management and Social Development, and the Diginema, the should have been here themselves, but because of other national assignment, they have asked us to come to carry out an assessment. And we have seen what has happened, very devastating indeed. I would thank Mr. President for his concern and sympathy uh, to keep his state about this uh, flooding. Over 500,000 hectares of farmlands spread across more than 300 kilometers were affected, and President Muhammadu Buhari described this as a major setback on the country's quest for self-sufficiency in food production. Nore Tonko Akili, NTA News. Minister of Works and Housing Babatunde Fashola has engaged federal controllers of works across the 36 states of the country and the FCT to bring them up to speed with government's expectation on timely delivery of ongoing rail projects. At a webinar with the controllers, the minister taxed them to take ownership of roads in their domains and ensure regular supervision of the projects to ensure that contractors deliver on scheduled. While emphasizing on government's huge inf investment in road infrastructure, the Minister of Works and Housing said controllers must act quickly in the event of distress on any road to ensure its rehabilitation as government is committed to providing motorable roads across the country. No matter how well maintained they are, the forces of nature, climate change, unpredictable rainfall, windstorm, hurricanes across the world, they damage our infrastructure. Wear and tear also damage our infrastructure. So we want you to be the first responders there. So when these things happen, we expect our controllers as our points of service to be the first people there to assure people that, oh, government is already aware that this problem has occurred. Announce what measures you want to take to give immediate relief. Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, still talking about road construction repair works on the damaged portion of the uh, Rikachukung Bridge along Kaduna Zaria Highway have advanced with the possibility of the bridge opening to traffic soon. Abdullahi Mohammed has the situation report. If you're watching this story for the first time, you may not agree with me that this is the exact point where the transition base of this bridge caved in about five days ago. Now, many machines have been brought in and they have carried out the remedial work expected to be carried out on this part of the bridge. And so far, it is all, only asphalt that is remaining to be applied here. And that may even be done uh, today. And that means very soon, traffic will be allowed to take this bridge. Let me uh, tell you that there are about nine bridges along 
Kaduna to Zaria alone, and all of them two lanes. I've spoken to engineers, independent engineers, uh, previously. Uh, they have told me that ensuring that the integrity of these bridges uh, stay or remain intact, uh, regular checks need to be carried out. From here, uh, we need to concentrate on all the bridges to do a serious check on all the bridges so that uh, uh, we will not just do overlay and then go away. Uh, to prompt action and as you can see they are doing the work, we expect them to do the same for the entire road. To ensure that the remedial work carried out on the transition base of this bridge stays as long as it should, structural engineers have advised that an eagle eye must be kept on these tiny holes that is responsible for draining out waters that drops on the bridge and the transition base. In Kaduna, Abdullah Muhammad, NTN News. Let's just take some messages. Stay with us. We don't must reach Abby. Okay. Guys, the mechanic is almost here. Ah, <laughs> what do you think is wrong? Ah, ah, madam, no, it's not the way they your bike. Oh. <clears throat> Carburetor and radiator. Is that Pavuka? If you want to fix that, a 50 tars. I guess I have no choice. Give me size 10 Allen Q. Madam, the talk don't spoil. Now you need to buy new one. New one at 16 tars. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll be on my way now. For renting your tools. Mega data plans. Dial star triple seven hash. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, invites all ministers, head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Federal Permanent Secretary and top government functionaries to a two-day performance review retreat to be presided over by His Excellency, Muhammad Buhari, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, scheduled to hold as follows. Date, Monday 7th and Tuesday 8th, September 2020. Time, 9 a.m. daily. Venue, State House Conference Center, Presidential Villa, Abuja. Objectives of the retreat include create transparency on the status of implementation of policies, programs, and projects of government and provide roadmap towards the delivery of government's nine priority agenda during the first year of the administration. Provide opportunity to deepen the understanding of ministers and other participants on the best practices towards ensuring effective delivery on government's business over the coming years. Registration for the retreat will take place on Sunday, September 6, 2020 at 4 p.m. and also on Monday, September 7, 2020 at 8 a.m. at the State House Conference Center, Presidential Villa Abuja. Attendance at the event is mandatory for those invited. Please. Announcer, Babatunde Lawal, Permanent Secretary, Cabinet Affairs Office, Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. Motors are 
are clearly built with one purpose in mind. They are built to serve. Elizade Autoland, sole distributor of JAC Motors in Nigeria. Everyone has always been faced with a moral question. Between what is right and what is wrong. Yet not everyone is ready to do the right thing. This is where we come in. We are Jai's Bank. Committed to making a difference by doing the right thing even if we stand alone. A place where transparency is an attitude and trust is a culture. A place where profit is shared and loss is born together. At Jai's Bank, we support you to shape a better tomorrow, a partnership to birth your dreams. Jai's Bank, for a better life. Let's quickly bring you an update now on, on the uh, coronavirus restriction in the country because the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 has announced Nigeria's transition into the third phase of the ease of restrictions for a period of four weeks with effect from Friday, 4th September. During the new phase, the nationwide curfew is still in force. Out, uh, but the, now from... Uh, Oh, 12 midnight to 4 a.m. May Tarek Ben has more. The consideration of the PTF's seventh interim report by President Muhammad Buhari, the third phase of the ease of lockdown will be for the next four weeks with continuation of the nationwide curfew. Meanwhile, railway services are to resume fully, markets are to resume fully on all days, mass gatherings are allowed for only 50 persons, while amusement parks, gyms and event centers can now reopen at half capacity. Bars and nightclubs are however to remain closed while public and civil servants below grade level 12 are still advised to work from home. Schools remain closed as far as the PTF is concerned but what we intend to do is to work with state governments as well as, as the federal to make sure that a proper risk assessment is made of every school that will open. That's the most important element. If you say every school open, different schools will have different levels of compliance. So the first stage is for state authorities to look at the level of preparedness of their schools. The PTF believes that while Nigeria is not ready for full reopening of the economy, there has been sufficient progress to warrant significant further relaxation of the restrictions applied. The main trust of the recommendation is that Nigeria advances to the third phase of ease restrictions with further amendments to address economic, social, political, and health concerns. The Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 took the national briefing to the new international terminal of the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport as a statement of confidence that all is set for the resumption of international flights this Saturday. Some airlines are, however, barred from flying into the country. Number one, Air France is not approved. Now, the reason for Air France is that tourist visa holders are not allowed entry. KLM not approved for the same reason as Air France. The initial six-month mandate of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, which will elapse this September, has been extended to December 2020 by President Muhammad Buhari in Abuja, Mitaire, Iqbal, NTA News. Now, President Mohamed Bari has directed the Federal Ministry of Agriculture to release 5,000 tons of grains of maize from the National Strategic Gain Grains Reserve to poultry farmers. The directive was communicated to the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mohamed Sabuna Nunu, in a letter by the Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari. The minister says the grains will be released to poultry farmers at a subsidized rate of 90,000 naira per metric ton as against the current market price of 170,000 naira. 
Nanunu assures that the ministry will immediately comply with the presidential directive in order to salvage the huge investment of about 10 trillion naira in the industry. The federal government is uh, evolving modalities to come up with a blueprint that will assist in eradicating poverty in the country. Comfort Amodu reports that the Interministerial Expert Technical Committee has been saddled with that task. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, more than 82 million Nigerians live on less than a dollar a day with 40% living below the poverty line of 137,430 naira a year. The quest to eradicate poverty necessitated President Mahmoud Buhari's commitment to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty within the next 10 years. The Interministerial Expert Technical Committee, constituted to ensure proper planning and coordination, concluded its three-day meeting with the prospect of warehousing or poverty eradication projects of the federal government. We might have made progress, but those progress we cannot actually refer to any one of them today. And we still have poverty. There is over 100 billion right now in carbon trading for Africa only. What it means, prove you have done some projects locally for climate change adaptation, create a certificate of emission reduction by inviting the UNFCC to come and verify what you are doing to save carbon. The committee intends to harness the economic potentials in cottage industries, agro-processing and special interventions to create more employment within the year through 2023. In Abuja, Comfort Amodu, NT News. The National Social Investment Programme of the Federal Government has been applauded once again. The commendation comes uh, this time around from focal persons appointed by state governors to oversee the effective implementation of various social impact projects. This was during a presentation of their scorecard to the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development in an interactive session organized by the Ministry in Abuja. Ruth Aguele reports. I've been a victim of joblessness for over four years, but Empower came in to put a smile on my face. Beneficiaries clearly excited about the impact of the federal government's national social investment programs in their lives. This feat was made possible with a role played by four co-persons who ensure that these interventions are well implemented in grassroots areas across the 36 states and the FCT, presenting their scorecards for the task given to them by the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development. They are optimistic of the programs with the successes already recorded, which has greatly impacted the lives of the beneficiaries. We drive this process at state level and we try as much as we could to see that the program operates within the established protocols. And in Plateau State, we are very fortunate to have started the implementation of Empower Junior, which is establishment of ICT center in two pilot schools. Like we saw in Abia State some weeks ago, when we paid out 540 million to beneficiaries of the conditional cash transfer program, for the very first time in their lives, they received money directly into their hands. For the ministry, these key interventions are timely as they depict commitment in efforts by the federal government towards eradication of poverty in the country. There is no doubt that the social investment programs are critical components of the present administration's activities and are vehicles through which His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari's vision of lifting 100 million people out of poverty in the next 10 years will be achieved. It is against this background that I urge every one of you to continue to give in your best to ensure the lives of those who are called to serve are made uh, better. There are high expectations from the facilitators for an improved service delivery to make a difference in the lives of the poor and vulnerable in the country.
In Abuja, Ruth Aguale, NTA News. The Minister of Women Affairs, Paul Tallinn, has directed that uh, secondary schools across the nation to accept female students who return to school after the delivery of their babies, as well as those sexually abused, to continue their education. The minister disclosed these at the ministerial uh, session of the 20th Regular National Council on Women Affairs in Abuja. Elizabeth Mori reports. The ministerial session discussed issues relating to the girl child and women in their homes, offices and society as a result of the lockdown. At the front burner were spousal attacks, rape, genital mutilation, stigmatization and other gender-based violence, addressing how they hamper on the social and economic development of the girl child and women. We are supporting capacity building for gender desk units in all our line ministries departments and agencies with support from development part partners as defined in the National Gender Policy of 2006. Those ministries and agencies who are yet to set up such desks, please, this is the best time to do so. As any intervention that is committed to COVID-19 response and re recovery programs must factor in the gender gaps. The session, which drew participants from all over the country, virtually advocated the education of women as a sure way of solving their challenges. All elected positions, political appointments, and government contracts at all levels, federal, state, and local government, should be reserved for women exclusively as, 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 as affirmative action. Empowerment of women, proper grooming of the male child, and effective family support system were part of the recommendations preferred to build a healthy society devoid of violence and abuses. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NC News. And the Minister of Women Affairs, Paul Tallinn, has expressed concern over the increasing rate of kidnapping in the country. The latest being the abduction of Dr. Vivian Otu, a senior registrar in the Department of Pediatrics and Child Health at the University of Calabar Teaching Hospital. The Minister, on behalf of the First Lady and all Nigerian women, condemned the act, which she said will further disrupt the already fragile health system. She said the ministry is in touch with the Inspector General of Police, the State Commissioner of Police and other security agencies to ensure her immediate release. The minister reassured her professional colleagues of the ministry's support in tracking her whereabouts. Following the approval by the federal government uh, for the enrollment of retired police officers on the National Health Insurance Scheme, the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, has directed the nationwide registration and capturing of all retired police officers with effect from 7th September to 23rd September 2020. Force Public Relations Officer DCP Frank Mba says, with this development, all retired police officers, along with a their spouse will have full access to all NHIS services and benefits covered by the Police Health Maintenance Organization. The exercise, which shall be in three batches, will take place at the various police area commands in the country. The Judicial Commission of the Inquiry set up by the Kaduna State Government to investigate the immediate and remote causes of incessant communal clashes in Kajuru, uh, Kachia and Chikung local government areas has submitted its final report to the Governor Nasiru Ahmad El Ufai, Mohammed Omar Ajingi reports. The Judicial Commission of Inquiry was set up on the 17th of August last year to unravel the causes and proffer solutions to the end-long communal clashes in Kajuru, Chukun and Kachia local government areas. Having concluded its findings through research and town hall meetings, the commission came up with this document containing what it calls facts and figures on the causes and most importantly solutions to the communal conflicts in the affected areas. We are going to establish a committee to work on the white paper for this report. And we hope this report will be another step forward in trying to answer the questions to the history of crisis in these areas. 
Governor Rufai had earlier interacted with religious leaders who also made their submissions on how to end the violence in southern Kaduna. The chairman of the State Peace Commission and secretary of the Anglican Communion Worldwide, Bishop Udo Ferro, participated virtually. My concern is the issue of narrative. Narratives in this state have baffled me, have surprised me. And I keep asking, is it the Kaduna state I know? We have to checkmate and review our sincerity. And now with the judgment, we will give account. The religious leaders are expected to carry the message of peace down to their followers. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umarajingi, NTA News. Repeat on politics now. The APC governorship candidate in Edo State, Osaye Izeyamu, is reaching out to the people of Edo Central with the message of simple agenda ahead of the election on the 19th of this month. He visited Esan West with other party leaders for the war to war tour to canvass for votes. Ngochu Kukaona brings us details. About 10 words are lined up for the commencement of the tour. The various challenges identified in these areas, including shortage of teachers, water and electricity, dilapidated infrastructure, are what the APC candidate promises to address if the people give him their mandate, but he wants them to shun violence at the election. Even if they prosper, the state they prosper. So any way to support your business, to support what you go do, you go do that. The L now leadership by example. Governor will now feel trust. Governor will now go see. Governor will go help on and want help. And the E now employment and empowerment. Not be only rapper. Now we're going to give our women. They want money to take work. You must all vote for APC. The former APC national chairman, Adam Soshomole, the state chairman of the APC and others, reaffirmed their confidence in Pastor Sage Zeyamu to make a difference in governance. We are hoping for better times ahead. And I look forward to the privilege of, in the near future, sitting with a professor first lady of Edo State. The wife of the APC candidate is one of those at the rally. The team observed a moment of silence in honor of the departed two police officers attached to the APC convoy who lost their lives in an auto crash. In Benin, Ogochkuka Ona, NTA News. The secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, will be 64 tomorrow, that's Friday. And President Mohamed Buhari has joined the governing party, the All Progressives Congress, APC and Federal Executive Council to celebrate with him. President Buhari, in a statement, sends warm greetings to family, friends, professional and political associates of the legal luminary, party stalwart and chairman of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. The president describes Boss Mustafa as a visionary and inclusive leader who continues to strengthen the governing party and the administration as the rallying point of the Federal Executive Council and his patriotism in guiding Nigerians in the midst of health and economic uncertainties. President Buhari prays Almighty God to strengthen the SGF for greater service to the nation and humanity. Similarly, on behalf of the management and the entire workforce of the NTA, the Director General of NTA, Malam Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, has joined other well wishes and loved ones in wishing the SGF boss Mustafa Gloria's birthday. The DG said working with the SGF has been a major catalyst of uh, modest achievements in the NTA on account of the inestimable guidance we consistently receive from him. The Director General General wishes him many more uh, anniversaries and years of service to God and the country in robust health and of course uh, uh, with all his heart's noble desires. Well, let's now join Hingunu in Lagos for more stories. Hingunu. Thank you, Joseph. 
A former managing director in the banking sector, Tokumbo Abiu, has emerged the standard bearer of the All Progressives Congress, APC, at the forthcoming Lagos East Senatorial District by election. This is sequel to the unanimous validation of his candidature at a primary held across the five local government areas in the senatorial district. Michael Olale reports. This is how members of the APC across the 72 wards in Lagos East Senatorial District unanimously affirm the candidature of Tokumbo Abiru after undergoing accreditation. The opposition was also confirmed by the APC Electoral Committee headed by Ibrahim Kabir Masari who declared the former banker winner after polling 111,551 votes. Invalid, none. Why? It's because we went for a direct primary elections. There is nothing like uh, invalid. This is to certify that Tokumbo Abiru, having scored the highest number of broadcasts, is hereby declared a winner and return elected. Based on the provision of the Electoral Act, the party's decision to opt for the consensus option instead of the contest is a demonstration of its democratic tenets devoid of personal interests. In a party where you have discipline, where you have uh, uh, people who really believe in that party, they will listen to the leadership. And that has given Lagos an edge politically over all other states in this country. The primary election became necessary due to the demise of Bayo Shinowo, the senator representing Lagos East at the National Assembly, who passed on in June this year. <laughs> Meanwhile, Femi Sahid has also emerged the party's candidate for the state's House of Assembly elections in Lagos. Michael Olale, NT News. Away pro from politics now, the resurgence of illegal slaughter slabs, abattoirs, and animal markets in Lagos State will be prevented to guard against the outbreak of diseases. Abola de Salami reports that the next line of action of the Agri Ministry is to regulate the subsector through monitoring and enforcement of relevant laws. In regulating the activities of red meat sellers, thwarts ensuring their compliance with hygiene and safety in the process of slaughtering and transportation of the meats to the various markets. The Meat Animal Traffic Trading and Slaughtering Law 2003, as well as the Meat Inspection Law of Lagos State 2019, were institutionalized. What seems like a fragrant abuse of the law by some operators in the business is not going down well with the state government as measures have been put in place to confiscate stray animals, dislodge all illegal slot slabs, abattoirs, and regulation of veterinary premises. You will all agree with me that the menace of illegal slaughter slabs is rearing its ugly head in the state again with attendant negative public health impact on the over 20 million populace of our dear state. It is therefore all the more imperative that actions be taken to clamp down on these illegal activities. While the state government is expressing zero tolerance for the existence of illegal slaughter slabs, leadership of some unions said they won't compromise in ensuring members comply with all safety guidelines. As an association, we compel our member to follow the government directive and we advise them on reason why they should make sure that what they give to the populace is also meet. It is however expected that the activities of the Lagos State Monitoring, Enforcement and Compliance Team will also control the menace of stray animals in the state. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. It's now time for a break. The news continues shortly. We had it not scratch. Uh-uh, what's wrong with this old man with it? Gas, 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 gas. Uncle Pizza, beg, give me your phone. And I'm going to 
police. Who is IJ police? The director of the DSS is my cousin's husband. The head of service is my sister's mafia. Akus, please wear the scarf to super genius. Please can we go? Ah, uh-uh, can we go? <laughs> <laughs> now, that's it. First, with the best data plans in town. Dial star triple seven hash. Glow unlimited. It doesn't matter. Have a cup of peak chocolate anytime and enjoy the delicious nourishment of chocolatey goodness. Peak. Reach for your peak. social media platforms facebook at nta network news instagram at nta network twitter at nta news now youtube at nta news online all visit www.nta.ng for live streaming visit www.nta.ng slash live now you can stay updated on the go be it on your tv iphone laptop or ipad or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can be the rich. You're still watching NTA Network News and we are back in Abuja. Let's take you now to the National Assembly where the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femik Bachapia Miller, has tabled proposals that would bring an end to the challenges of Nigerian traders doing business in Ghana. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that this was during a legislative diplomatic engagement with Ghanaian officials in Kumasi, Ghana. The implementation of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center Act, some sections of which provide that foreign investors are not allowed to participate in petty trading, sale of goods or provision of services in a market, a retail of finished pharmaceutical products, and that a person who is not a citizen may engage in trading upon investing one million US dollars have affected Nigerian traders in Ghana. The Speaker, Femi Gbaja Biamila, during a legislative diplomacy bilateral meeting with Ghanaian lawmakers and some top government officials, called on authorities to revisit the components of the law that requires a capital base of one million U.S. dollars. He pointed out that by virtue of being ECOWAS countries, nations and citizens should be able to live, work and thrive in member nations without any form of hindrance or discrimination. The speaker noted that the implementation of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center Act should be explored further vis-a-vis -vis ECOWAS trade protocols, the recent adoption of the African Continental Trade Agreement by African nations, and also the movement towards a single currency in the West African sub-region. He said the challenges that Nigerian traders face in Ghana are a cause for deep concern for all arms of the Nigerian government and the Nigerian people. The Ghanaian Minister of Trade and Industry, Alan Kiremateng, said there are many Ghanaians and Nigerians who are going about their lawful duties without difficulties. He, however, said that as long as the laws remain on the statute books, his request is that those who are engaged in retail trading should, at least for now, until further considerations are made, respect the law because Ghanaian traders themselves are required to respect the laws as it will be discriminatory to require Ghanaians to respect the same laws and not require foreigners to do so. A communique will be issued as the conclusion of talks. Lami Ali, NCA News. 
In the meantime, the Ghanaian uh, delegation and the top Nigerian government officials have met in Abuja with a view to strike a deal on improved bilateral relations. A statement by Ministry of Foreign Affairs says Ministers of Information, their counterparts on foreign affairs, trade and investment of the two countries form part of the diplomatic talks. Nigeria's Minister of Justice and Con Comptroller General of Immigration form part of the engagement. Media practitioners in Nasarawa state have been challenged to sustain playing critical role that will continue to add value in uniting the people while government fulfills aspiration of development. This is coming at the inauguration of remodeled government house press center by Governor Abdullahi Suli as critical players in the industry, including NTA Director General Yakub Ibn Mohammed attended. Aliyu Tijani Mohammed reports. Behold is the face of the new press center at the government house Lafia. NTA supporting the initiative of the state government towards promoting synergy between the government and the media as its director general, Yaqub Ibn Mohammed, joined Governor Abdullah Isuli to inaugurate the complex. <laughs> with facilities to enhance workings of journalists in government house and the state. The press center is set to open a new vista of relationship between the government and the media. The administration will be guided by the respect for the rule of law, competence, and ability for meaningful reportage so that you can add value to society. His Excellency has proved to be a media-friendly person. On behalf of my colleagues in the media, both print, electronic, and online, I say a very big thank you. Earlier, Yaqub Ibn Mohammed paid court's visit on Governor Abdullah Isuli, where he commends NTA for certain pace in the area of accurate, objective, and fair reportage and programming that are promoting national unity and cohesion. The DG paid homage on the Emir of Lafia, Jossi C. Debaige the first, who harps on the need for media practitioners to uphold ethics of the profession and tackle rising cases of fake news and hate speech. The monarch acknowledged the pivotal role NTA is playing in promoting peace in the country, as DG appreciates the support of the Emir to NTA. In Lafia, allude to Jen Mohamed, NTA News. The Director General of the Nigerian Television Authority, Yaku Ibn Mohammed, says discipline and commitment to ex executing core mandates will continue to be the watchword of the organization. Ben Me Too reports that the Director General stated this while inaugurating projects at NTA Lafia, Nasarawa State. Internally generated revenue, NTA Lafia built new infrastructure and rehabilitated old ones. Among the new ones, accommodation for welfare of staff as well as for those coming to Lafia on official engagements. The Director General commended the General Manager, the management and the entire staff for achieving the feat. He recalled how the station was before the posting of the General Manager, saying it is a wake-up call to his colleagues to generate resources and transform their stations. Because you couldn't have achieved this thing you know, by working alone. You know? So we need to put our heads together, put our minds to it, make things happen by initiating things. And you people in Lafayette have done a very good job. I'm very proud of the entire workforce of NTA Lafia. While addressing staff, Yaqub Ibn Mohammed challenged NTA stations on effective utilization of resources and entrenching excellent work ethics at all times. He reminds them to be disciplined at all times. Hamza Musa Makarfi says the DGs exemplified excellent leadership in changing the face of NTA and thank him for assisting the station. In Lafia, Ben Mitu, NTA News. The Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Goswil Akbabu, has inaugurated the Field Forensic Auditors in Abuja in line with the Presidential Directive on the Holistic Examination of Activities of the Ministry. He said the 
Eight forensic auditors were cleared by the Bureau of Public Procurement based on individual firm's technical competencies and financial compliance and are supposed to examine and provide answers as well as create a framework for reversing the failures recorded in the past. The audit is expected to be seen as an opportunity, not a witch hunt, but considered an important project by the Buhari administration that will provide a strong base for a new NDDC to emerge. Let's bring you sports now, regressing of uh, Moshuda Biola National Stadium, Abuja. Let's take that. Football stakeholders have continued to applaud the federal